Hello, um, this is Miriam again um, with part two of our wooing courtship and marriage customs in Africa. Um, I'm sure, as you can see, possibly from my puffy face, is about um, a few minutes to 6 a.m. right now. Um, I had wanted to come in a bit earlier to see if um, the time was better, you know, late, late nights or early evenings would be better for for viewers to to come on live but i just wasn't able to, to 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 do that but i'm here right now and i think going forward would we'll just i just um try and get it done earlier uh, earlier for me and later for most of the world um so thank you for joining in and i hope you enjoyed part one this is part two of the um, live video series and I chose the topic the use of traditional items in marriage and their significance most times you find that um, the, the items that are presented to the bride's parents the, there are quite a few of non-negotiable traditional items such as um, um, alligator pepper cola nuts you know and things like that so i just wanted to highlight some of them because a lot of them are, have, are being used in almost all aspects of of um cultural life not only for weddings but also for other ceremonies like the naming ceremonies installation of chiefs you know and other festivals they're very key they always um they're always used so this time i, I was i've been able to get my my the document that I prepared so I just want to see if um, I can I can show that so just um, be patient with me as I try to to um, navigate navigate that so here goes um, I might not get it right because it's still a bit new to me yeah so this is a PDF I prepared to help so um, like the last time I want to talk about myself just to introduce myself for a little bit in case there's someone who is not familiar with me my name is Miriam Galadima Benson I live in Abuja in Nigeria which is right at the heart of West Africa. I started Quilt Africa Fabrics in 2017 because of my love for fabrics. And I started quilting as a hobby because I, at that time I was making, I had a custom made children's clothes um, business that I used strictly African fabrics. You know, so you can see that my love for African fabrics goes, has gone on for a long time. So because I started quilting, you know, I started showing my works on, to. I made some quilting friends and started showing my work and they encouraged me to turn that hobby into a business and I absolutely have no regrets. So mostly I know about African prints from ac accompanying my mom to the famous Balogun fabrics market in Lagos during her buying trips um, for her business which she started which she was running in the 80s. You know she'd take me there and we'd go to all the fabric shops, the, the, the dealers you know, I remember the smell of freshly minted African prints, you know, and the sound of the scissors ripping through the fabric as the the sellers were attending to us who came to buy. You know, the sights, the smells, the bodies. If you know anything about African markets, you know that they're open air and it's always such a hustle and, a, and so much bustle just going on. So those are my, my memories of... Of fabric and that's where I learned about design African fabric designs the quality of the cotton you know the thread counts and things like that so I'm married I work from home I'm a mother to three beautiful kids and you often possibly see them in the videos helping me out with um, with with the business so um, I decided to do a video series this year to bring my Africa to you, you know, I wanted to show my Africa to you. 
I wanted to I just want to talk about all aspects of the customs and the traditions and the way of life in Africa and I wanted to make it like a series so um, maybe per month depending on the holiday you know I'd pick a topic that relates to an international holiday so that um, the members of the Quilt Africa tribe can relate with it so as you know um, this this month February is International Valentine's Day but it's also Black History Month in the US where we have the bulk of um, Africans if you permit me to say Africans in one place outside of uh, uh, of Africa you know I'm talking about my African-American sisters and brothers that are in the US so I just felt it just tied in beautifully to kick off these the series the video series and to start with the marriage customs in honor of Valentine as well so in the last series I talked about the African marriage process how um, you know the a couple intending to get married they meet they either find themselves in, in the old days it will be at the water at the water watering hole at the rivers at the streams where the ladies fetch water you know oftentimes because of tribal wars and the fear of being kidnapped and slave traders men would accompany women you know so those were some of the times that um they would meet at festivals at dances you know at ceremonies and sometimes cousins and aunties could match make oh i think this person would suit you so they set it up and then they get to meet um like i said the last time immediately a relationship looks like it's getting serious um an investigation begins you know and i also mentioned that in my own case i remember um anytime someone had an interest in me my mom would um tell me about the history of the people because nobody wanted to be coupled with um a family that had a stigma on them or a family that had mental illness or a family that had in some way offended the gods you know nobody wanted that bad association so the investigation was very very critical you know in in here we have we can say oh they come from a family of lazy farmers or they have come from a family where they don't know how to farm the earth doesn't like them so they don't produce enough crops so we can't let you go there but after the investigation and things are found to be okay there are two sets of introductions that are done one the groom and his father and one or two uncles visit the bride's family where she's invited and she speaks her mind and gives her consent there's kind of like a semi-formal setting meeting with the parents and um, and the, the bride's parents and the groom's parents and maybe one or two aunties and uncles, you know, they discuss and then the, the ball is set rolling. Over time, a second introduction date is set. This is more formal. This is practically marriage. So in the days before the white wedding, you know, the church wedding, this would have been the marriage you know this the introduction would have been the marriage but these days because there's court wedding there's um, a white wedding it's still it's it's now called it it's it's still called a traditional marriage but it's more like a pre thing to the main wedding so this is more formal it's more elaborate more invitations and so many other things um happen you know and then finally um Oh, oh, sorry, I mixed it up. The second introduction is where the, the groom's family is giving the list. Sorry about that. The list where um, the real traditional marriage ceremony comes up. You know, um, they're giving a list of which I have picked the Aquating Aure, which is just a suitcase of clothing that is given to the lady. You know, um, some a lot of times the specific items would be... Um, would be told would be said to the groom so he he picks he brings exactly what is in but essentially there has to be a good mix of casual and formal and trendy clothes that the that the bride should have to show her in society as a married woman and then finally the traditional marriage ceremony where a day is fixed and everyone in the community is invited to a day of prayers and feasting 
you know, as the two families are joined together by marriage. So that is the generally the African uh, marriage process. So I also talked about the wedding list. So many things, you know, tubers of yam, goats, chickens, kola nuts, farm service, um, sesame seeds. You know, so many things are requested on the list that should be presented by the groom's family on the traditional wedding day. So I spoke about that a bit last week. So if you've missed any of, I was a bit more detailed with the introduction in the first part. So in case you missed it, you can go back and take a look at it. Now, there are some non-negotiable non items that in most cultures, they have to be brought. You know, one of those is kola nuts. Now, kola nuts is synonymous with the African culture, you know. In Things Fall Apart, Chinua Achebe, written by Chinua Achebe, uh, a, a, a literary giant, in, I, think, I think a global literary giant, who I'll pr proudly say comes from, uh, from, from Nigeria. He, he, his books are, gained the renown that they did because they, they explicitly break down the African life prior to the coming of the white man. In fact, in, in things fall apart, things fell apart because the white man came and disrupted the African life. And the first encounters, the, the people that encountered the white man first didn't know how to balance their traditional cultures with the invasion of the white um, coming. So I really, it's recommended reading. I'll probably, at the end of this series, I think I'll just do a resource list where... Um, all of the, 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 the resources that I, I use and the resources that have inspired me to, to this. Um, if you want to know more about just the African culture, I'd really recommend Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. He also has a lot of other books, but this is his most famous and I think my favorite because it, there's just so much life and it's so, I really enjoyed reading it, you know. Kola nuts are a very important part of African culture and tradition. You know, like I said, he who brings kola brings life. That's a saying in Igbo. You know, um, once you receive a guest, the guest comes out with, with kola nuts. Even if he has nothing to offer, the man of the house will always have kola nuts that he shares with his visitors. Because kola nuts is regarded as um, something that initiates a relationship. Once you chew it together, you know, it signifies that you trust the person and you're, you're meeting with him with an open mind, with no duplicity and no desire to hurt him. You know, it's, Kolanot is also regarded as a sacred channel of blessings. You know, it's used in all ceremonies, in naming ceremonies, in wedding ceremonies, installation of chiefs, in everyday um, interactions with neighbors and friends and important visitors. So Kolanot is very, very important. You know, I'd also like to point out right now that most of these traditional items are highly connected to local deities, you know. Um, of course, you know, in those days, before the advent of Christianity, it was the local gods, the, the ancestors, the spirits of the ancestors that were being worshipped, you know. So a lot of these non-negotiable traditional items are, are a reflection of that. It invites the spirits of the ancestors into the marriage with the idea that it helps the couple to live better. You know, now there's also schnapps. For whatever reason, schnapps is the accepted drink. Prior to the coming of the white man, it used to be palm wine. You know, the... the, the wine that comes from the palm trees, a specific palm tree that grows all over, especially the coastal parts of Africa, uh, you know. It used to be the palm wine, but I guess the schnapps was one of the first drinks that the European sailors traded with. So now it has become the drink that people bring for wedding. It's an acceptance drink. In those days, you'd bring the palm wine to gain audience with an elder or the local local gin you know there's ogogoro there's apeteshi there's a lot of them or you bring any of the local brews either the grain or the spirits you know and you present it to an elder it's also used as appeasement to the gods before any sort of deliberation 
can be held. Usually in Africa, you take whatever drink it is and you pour it on the earth. Not only the ground, but it has to be the earth. You pour it on the, on the earth to, as an invitation and appeasement to the ancestors that they come and they partake in whatever conversation that is being held. The same way that Christian, as Christians we pray and say, Oh, um, Father, come and be in our midst and direct our course. Is the same way that schnapps or any kind of drink is poured on the ground and then it is, um, it invokes the presence of the elders. You know, in other cultures, interestingly, it is used as, um, as seed. You give the bride um, schnapps and an amount of money to help her start up a business, to, to help her start trading so she can help out with the family with the family expenses you know and be a useful contributing economic member of the family you know to help the husband some um another use for drinks is that it's used to signify the importance of religion to the couple that when you get married and you establish your home do not um do not forsake religion do not forsake the religion of your fathers you know or do not forsake the ancestors um, so that's one of the things that this is used for. The next thing is the, um, just a minute, please. The next item is cola nuts, schnapps. So the next thing is, um, alligator pepper. Alligator pepper is also a very integral part of, um, ceremonies in Africa. You know, ceremonies, festivals, anything important. But that's only in some cultures. And in those cultures, it's non-negotiable. Everything has to have alligator pepper. You know, even in just um, you come to visit me, some cultures will present you cola nut as well as alligator pepper. Now, alligator pepper is said to prevent accidents in the couple's home and their lives. It's also said to keep them together. But like I said, these are items that are used in shrines and associated with certain deities. So alligator pepper is one of is one of those. The next item is I don't really know much about the alligator pepper, so I probably have to dig in more. But I know that um, a lot of the times, even if it's it's actually a herb, is a spice, but it's used more for ceremonies and in, and in relation to, to shrines and deities and rituals and sacrifices more than it is used in cooking you know so but i have to find out more about that to find what it signifies now goats in almost every culture goats are requested some might request it alongside chickens but goats are requested in almost every culture in my culture the goats are used and i believe in almost all the cultures that request for them the goats are taken and they are used as sacrifices in the shrines of the local deity. In some other cultures, the elders or the priests that come for the marriage will kill the animal and use the blood on the house or the items of the couple. So now because a lot of us are Christians and we no longer believe in animal sacrifices just randomly, we do not request for or accept um, or present it to anyone these sacrificial animals i remember for my wedding and for my sister's wedding the goat was um, monetized and it was just shared amongst my uncles rather than presenting a goat that will be taken to the local shrine you know and sometimes they lay hands on well most times the priest and the elders will lay hands on the goats and they'll speak blessings supposedly for the couple and then it will be slaughtered and then the blood is um you know invocations are made with the blood but because, like I said, we're Christians, most of these, uh, we, we, we take a firm stand against, against it. So these few items, you know, the drinks, the alligator pepper, the cola nuts, the, the goats, these are like non-negotiable traditional items with deep significances, you know. Um, in some cultures, it, it, they don't care who you are or what you are you just have to bring them because they are ties to their to their gods are still strong you know but in places where the ties to the gods are not that strong um they are not 
requested any longer. Another important thing is this jigida. In almost every culture, it has to be in the among the things that you give to the the, the bride because waist beads are they 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 are more or less a status thing. A bride will wear them on her waist. Or even a maiden, you start from girls. You have the thinner beads, um, the thinner beads with a few lines. And then as you go older, more lines are added. And as you get married, they become thick and they become big because we believe that it enhances the woman's hips and it makes her more desirable to her husband. Or as a maiden, it makes her stand out and it makes her win a husband. So these are also very important. In most cultures, you have to present your wife with um, with waist beads. You know, I've told the story before of how my mom said growing up, it was scandalous for a woman, any woman, a girl, a child, no matter her age, very scandalous for her not to have waist beads, you know, um, because they didn't have panties in those days. Panties came with the white men on the underclothing came with westernization so to go about without waist beads was tantamount to walking about without panties you know it was just scandalous so um the groom would provide his bride with waist beads and so she can look attractive to him and he can enjoy the sway of her hips you know and he keeps the fire going in the marriage so these are the these are some of the things that are the non negotiables. There's so many other things, you know. Like I said, there will be sugar cane, there will be honey to keep the honey in the marriage. There will be tubers of yam, but those are not um, they are not quite traditional. These waste beads in those days before the the before we started getting plastic beads, they would use seeds. They would drill seeds in the middle, you know, certain seeds of certain plants. They'd gather them, they'd drill them in the middle and string it. So that was what was used. So this, this um, waste beads are from, I, I, I tried to pick out things that were from long before anything Western came into, into the culture. You know, but now um, so many other things that are, that are, well, that are not quite traditional, that are added on because the traditional things become looked down on or are a little bit scarce. So the goats, the waist beads, the alligator pepper, the drinks, schnapps, palm wine, you know, or the local brew, and then the cola nuts. These are the non-negotiable, very important items that are being used in weddings. In every culture, in Ghanaian culture, in cultures in Nigeria, East Africa, West Africa, they, most of them use this. Um, but I know the cola nut is, is very popular in, in Western, Western Africa because it's grown mostly here. So I'm not too familiar with the cultures of the Southern and Eastern Africa, but um, I, w I, I can almost be sure that an animal of some sort would be presented and some of these items that are local to their, to their region would be would be used as well. So this is the part two. Um, I hope you've learned something, um, found it interesting. And like I said, if there's anything that I can, I can, any questions you have that I can answer concerning any of these things, you found out your tribe, your D, you know, your DNA, you know, the region of Africa where you're from, or you've lived there before, you know, um, as a missionary, just let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll dig in because there's so much information with over 250 tribes in Nigeria alone. There's so much information and so much cultural differences. But, but the, the thing about African culture is the integral, the bedrock of the culture remains the same. It's just these um, little, there's just little differences that are particular and peculiar to each culture. So I'm just trying to get you a broad view of what the African culture um, is about. So if you want specifics, 
you have to let me know. I, I generally concentrate on Nigeria and West Africa because that's where I'm from. That's where I'm most familiar with. But if there's anything you want to find out or you want to contribute because you're from another region of Africa or you've lived there, please feel free to share and make a comment under any of the videos. I'm going to make this also available on the YouTube channel. So please feel free to look again and I'll really appreciate if you subscribe to the YouTube group. So um, to the YouTube channel, sorry, so it can grow. And if you could recommend other people who you know are African culture and tradition and history enthusiasts, please um, help out and um, send them a link. So that's it on the traditional items used in, um, the, in marriages in Africa. You know, um, look forward to the next topic. Um, I'll probably rebroadcast this on, on Wednesday because I didn't give any notice. This is just like, because I didn't want to miss out on my Monday. I said Monday. I'm trying to keep up with Monday. I know at least the people in North America would kind of catch it Monday going into Tuesday. I just wanted to keep my word. But I have to apologize again. My life gets a bit crazy. But I'm determined to just stick to doing this. Because it means a lot to me for me to share my 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 africa with you and my part of the world so don't forget to drop by the store um our mystery fabrics are shipped to anywhere in the u.s for just eight dollars so you can order in any part of the u.s and you can get it shipped within a few days for only eight dollars Mystery bundles of 5, of 10, 15, and 20 fat quarters are available for you. Um, you can also follow and connect with us, Quilt Africa Fabrics, on Pinterest, on Quilt, um, on Facebook, and Instagram. So, this year, I just want to get as many people on board as possible because, like I said... Um, I want to just share more about Africa and I hope you will be a part of a part of my growth story as you have I've, I've always enjoyed your support. So I just want to say thank you for stopping by. Um, don't forget to drop your questions or requests or more information about the series, about fabrics, about anything and I'll be very happy to respond. So I try to keep this short and i hope you enjoyed it and i look forward to seeing you on wednesday on wednesday this might be a broadcast um just a broadcast and i'll be available to to receive questions from you so thank you so much for your time and i look forward to hearing from you take care and bye